Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents pastor and evangelist Pete Rowe. Welcome everybody to the program today and we thank God for another privilege of getting to be with you over the station. Especially want to dedicate it to you in the hospitals and nursing homes and just wherever you are we thank God for you and I'm going to be asking you to have your Bible ready as I get in the message today and uh, truly children we're in these last days and, and I believe knowledge is going to keep us stable in the hour that we're living and I want to invite you now to be sure to have your Bible ready as we go into our message and uh, two I want to make announcement now that Lord willing, we're going to, like I said, be moving out more into revivals and also into teaching the Word of God into different cities and places. And I want to ask the good saints of God if you get a change and you can help us find places where we can come into your areas and, and, and minister the Word of God because I feel God more to really dedicate to teaching the Word of God and these are definitely the last days that we need the Word of God to uh, abound in our life. So you that are in the Knoxville, maybe Tennessee areas and Kentucky, Virginia, West Virginia, if you can help us find places in these areas, wherever our programs are, we're going to try to be out more in this year coming. And, and whether it's in a church or maybe a some kind of an armory building or something. If you can help us find places to be in your areas, we do want to be out with the God, God's people everywhere. And we thank God for the service we had in Princeton, West Virginia, at Brother Ronnie Steele's little church up there in the, that area, Church of Jesus. And we thank God for all the ones that got to come out and be with us. We love you and appreciate you for coming out even though it was stormy weather, but I thank God for the good turnout. And we just appreciate the Lord today. And wherever you are, we're going to ask you to be sure to have your Bible ready as I get into our message. And uh, today, now, I'm going to be speaking a little bit out of the book of Ephesians chapter 4, how that God's people need to really get in a, a good way with the Lord to being able to receive the Word of God and, and put it first in their life above all, all the traditions that's out here in the world. And today I'm going to go ahead and start out of the book of Ephesians, a fourth chapter. And this is something now that Paul began to write in the eighth verse of the fourth chapter of the book of, of uh, Ephesians. The Bible said in verse 8, Wherefore? He saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that's when Jesus ascended back into glory. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And of course, the way he fills all things now is through the Spirit of God. And he gave some, now that's in the church, apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Now, 
this is exactly what's happened in these last days because even John and different one of the writers of the New Testament begin to warn us about the false ministers and teachers that would come up in the land and you can better believe they're here today and this is why God put in his church the apostles which is the ones that we can find here in the book and then he gave prophets, evangelists, teachers and pastors and he still anoints for that work today but also you've got a member now that Satan has already transformed himself into an angel of light. And he's got his ministers out here that have been also transformed as ministers of righteousness. But now God's going to judge them according to their works. So every one of us has got to meet the Lord in the final day of judgment. And what we need to understand that this is the greatest hour why we have our freedom of speech, freedom of religion. It's a great hour for the saints of God to really strive to please God and really contend for the Word of God and put your whole life dedicated to believing it because, children, this is a very evil day. But now the reason God set the church up the way He did, of course, it all began at Pentecost. He had the apostles, he had the prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Some call it the fivefold ministry, but now he always had them when he established the church. And their job now was to bring the people to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of a son of God so they could grow. And if you'll notice here now, in verse 15 it said, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase, of the body under the edifying of itself in love. Now listen. So we need to realize that God has already said everything the way he wanted it. And this Bible is the infallible word of God. And the way we believe on our Lord is to believe on him through the teaching of the apostles in the book of John 17. Now... Let me just show you some things here as Peter now begin to write to us in the book of 1 Peter about the first chapter. And if you'll notice in verse 14, or let's just start at verse 13, Peter said, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not a fashion in yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which is called you is holy, so be you holy in all manner of conversation. For it is written, because it is written, be you holy for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without respect to persons, judges according to every man's work, past the time of your soldiering, here in fear. For as much as you know, now notice this, that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation. In other words, you weren't bought with money. You was bought with a price, but it took the blood of Jesus. And the Bible said here that as much as you know you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb 
without blemish, thank God, and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead, thank God, and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God, seeing you have purified your souls in what? Obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. And Peter said, See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, now here it is, not of corruptible seed, that's traditions and doctrines of men because they're corruptible, but of incorruptible by the word of God which lives and abides forever. For all flesh is as grace and all the glory of man as a flower of grace. The grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which by the gospel, thank God, is preached unto you. So children, we need to truly get earnest with God and go after that faith that God really gave to the church. And that, of course, was the word of God. And these men, now you can put your total confidence in the apostles and the prophets and study and be approved of God. And then when God's ready to do works and, and gifts and signs and so forth, it's going to be to the believers. See, now we've got a job to do in these last days and that's getting that whole armor of God on. And that's going to take by really setting our affection and our faith on things above. Because you're definitely in the perilous time right now that many's already departed from the Word of God. And we got a lot of traditions and doctors of men. And these things, children, is going to hinder a relation with the Lord. But now, if you get time, go back and study these things out. Because Peter now was a given same as Paul and the rest of them as a great master builder. They know the way of God. And they know how to feed the children. And even Peter let us know there's babies in the Lord. There's mature people in the Lord. And children strong meat, representing the, the mysteries of fullness of the Word of God, only way we're going to be able to receive it is that we're willing to lay aside weights and things that hurt our relation with God. And not only that, but you've got to put Jesus first above all traditions and doctrines of men. And when we do that, then you're not going to be ashamed of Him. See? Now, a lot of people don't realize it, but they are parts of that Bible that people's ashamed of it. Because even Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me and my words, I'm going to be ashamed of you. But realize one thing. Every word of God is pure. You better believe there's not one scripture in that Bible that is not in spirit of God and it is pure. And the Bible said in Proverbs 30 that every word of God is pure and he's a shield to them that will put their trust in Him. So see, we're going to have to accept God's Word above our own traditions, our mother's religion, our father's religion. You're going to have to learn to be mature in the Lord. You're going to have to go the way of the Lord. See? Now, if you've ever noticed babies, they'll get pouted up and puffed up. and, and, and You can't be that away, children. And really have a a good craving for the Word of God. You've got to put God first. And that means that and a lot of times the Word of God will be against the way you believe. See? Or the way your tradition is. Or way even that maybe you thought you were doing God a good way or something. But when we study the Word of God, now it will correct us. 
It'll let us know where we're at, and it will now separate us from the world. And that's why Peter said here to be born again. Let me read it again. Listen to it now. Being born again, not of a corruptible seed, in verse 23, but of incorruptible seed, by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. See? And this is the word now, the gospel, that is the power of God to salvation. And we got to believe him, believe his word, and children, then we're going to make it in these last days. And I know it's perilous times right now, and you've got so many ways set up in the world, and people's kind of fearful who to believe, but children, if our words don't line up with the word of God, you need to shun that. I'm sure it's with you. You can't please God and please men at the same time. See, Paul said, if I seek to please men, I should not be a servant to Christ. Why? Because a lot of men don't want to please Christ. And we've got to realize now that that incorruptible seed, the Word of God, that's what matures us and grows us and helps us to stand in the evil day. Now go with me to James right quick. The book of James. I want to read you something here, and then we'll get into a lot more of Peter's teaching here. But I want you to notice the book of James. And you read it all when you get time, but I'm going to go to the first chapter now, the book of James, in verse 19. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, get rid of it, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Now listen to verse 22. But be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, notice that, and not a doer, he's like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholds himself and goes his way and straightway forgets what manner of man he was. See, you can't be that away. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, there it is. The perfect law of liberty makes us free and continueth therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you, now notice this, seems to be religious and bridles not his tongue but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion, undefiled, before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. So see, children, there's really more than reading. You have to study to be approved. And not only that, but if any man in verse 23 be a hearer of the word and not a doer, see, He's like a man that beholds his natural face in a glass, looks at himself, then goes his way and forgets what manner of person he was. Now, that's, that's why a lot of people have to repent over and over of the same old things. So we're going to have to grow up, mature, and believe me, you've got to get a desire for that milk of the Word. And we're going to be showing you, Lord willing, in our next program, what it really means to be a doer and not just to hear only because... Now remember, faith comes by hearing. See? And hearing by the Word of God. And then we, when we start obeying it, then God brings the commandments that He said He would do to pass. 
He said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And you can better believe he'll do his part if we do our part. So we got a job, not just hearing the word, but thank God being a doer of the word. And then God can justify us, clear us of guilt, and we can receive the things of God. Now, notice how James is writing here. Because you've got to understand faith is very important to God. You can't please Him without it. But you too cannot take faith and put a respect to persons. See, watch old James here, verse 1 of chapter 2. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons, for if thou come unto your assembly, a man which has a gold ring in goodly apparel, and thou come in also a poor man in thy raiment. Now watch this, you can't put the rich above the poor. You can't be a respecter of persons. Paul, uh, uh, James said, And you have respect to him that wears the gate clothing. And say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place. And say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are you not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? See their children? Now, you better believe there's people today by satellites and televisions, and right now all you hear out of them is prosperity, Preaching wealth and the modern way of saying it, they're bumming you over the air. But they got what they call sowing a seed in place of that word. <laughs> but children, listen. I believe in tithes, as I said. I believe in offerings. But let me tell you, God can't be bribed or God can't be bought. When He gives His gifts and gives His blessings... It's all because people is being obedient to his truth. See? Now, they're having a respect of persons. They put the rich in a good place with them. But the poor, they'll say something's wrong with you. You're not serving God right if you're poor. Jesus Christ told you plainly that blessed are the poor for they'll have the gospel preached unto them. You can't be respecter of persons because you'll commit sin if you do. Now, listen to it again. James said, Have not the faith, notice this, of our Lord Jesus Christ with respect to persons. You can't do it. For if thou come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring, in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in thy raiment. And you have respect to him that wears the gate clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place. And you say to the poor, Listen, stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. James said, Are you not then partial in yourselves? and are become judges of evil thoughts. Hearken, my beloved brethren, has not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, come on, and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to them that love him? But you have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you, and draw you before the judgment seats. See, children, you can better believe that's going on now. You look at a lot of these satellite ministers. I can't give their names every time, but I'll tell you one thing. They shun the poor. They, they boast the rich, and they're definitely respecter of persons. And what do they do? They'll give place to the rich, despise the poor. But what did God say? Listen to this. Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which you are called? If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, 
thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. See? But, if you have respect of persons, James said you commit sin and are convinced of the law as what? Transgressors. Honey, you better believe it. The way of a transgressor is hard right now. A lot of these rich ministers, oh, they're enjoying it. They're enjoying their riches and their wealth and their power. But, honey, there's a judgment coming. And most people, they're getting a reward in this life. You cannot respect one above another. You cannot despise the poor and be a Christian. There ain't no way possible. Now, Jesus was rich, but he became poor. He owns it all anyway. And you listen to this now. But if you have respect to person, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, notice that, he's guilty of all. For he that saith, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, art thou not become a transgressor of the law? See? So speak you, and so do, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Now, you can't respect the commandments either. Jesus said, what I say to one, I say it to all. Every word of God, children, is right. Whatever's in this book, God put it in here. And we cannot choose the part that we like and then shun the part that we don't like. You have to believe the word of God. Even Jesus said man would not live by bread only, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, our faith needs to build up in these days. Come on. And so, James is telling you that the commandment it said don't commit adultery, that's the same one it said don't kill or steal. But did you know it's also said thou shalt not covet. See? Now, people, when they go despising and, and, and treating the word of God as though maybe it's respect to persons, they're going to commit sin. But it's a hearer and a doer of the word that's justified with God. So we need to remember these things because I believe God's going to build his little people up and we need him today. So I see my time is about up. <coughs> Write us in any prayer requests and be sure to stay with us in our next program till we see you again. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to the Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you.